and welcome to Google Classroom Life Hacks. With everybody doing remote learning right now, we thought it would be helpful to take a walk through Google Classroom and show you some tips and tricks that might be helpful during your remote learning time. First, we wanted to start with the main screen or what is called your class dashboard. So you get to that by clicking on classes and you'll see all of your class periods listed right here. Now, as you can see, I've got periods one, two, and three listed and they are out of order. This is the way that it was populated. So I wanna show you a little trick first to move just by clicking, uh, left clicking on your mouse and grabbing that class, you can reorder them so that they are in the order that maybe you visit them during the school day. The next thing we're gonna visit is these two important buttons or links up at the top, the to-do and the calendar. When you click on the to-do, it's gonna show you a new screen with tabs at the top. You have assigned, missing, and done, or completed work. It also only um, populates or shows you this week's assignments. But remember, there might be more there that you have to use these important arrows to see. For example, when I click down, I noticed that there was no due date set but there is a quiz that I need to complete. So even though the teacher didn't put a due date on it, this is work that I need to do. When you click up here onto missing, it will populate all the assignments that may be missing from last week or the current week that you didn't complete. So any past assignments would show up under the missing tab. And the done tab is gonna show you all the completed work that you've done. Another way to make sure that you are staying up to date with all of your assignments is by going into the class period. There are a couple other shortcuts within each of your classes. First, you will notice that on the left hand side, it says upcoming and due tomorrow, there is an assignment. However, this can be a little misleading and you're going to want to click on the view all just to make sure that you are up to date with your current assigned work and any missing work that you have not turned in. So once you do that, you'll have a really good look at the assignments that you need to complete for your class. Here's tip number three. This is one that I think you're going to find extremely useful, especially if you feel like your email has been bombarded with teacher posts from Google Classroom. Every time a teacher posts, your Google Classroom is set to send you an email, but you can adjust the frequency of those emails by going into the settings and changing what email notifications you allow to be emailed to you. I don't recommend removing all of the notifications because there are some that you're going to want to see. But one that would be very helpful and help to clear up your inbox would be the work and other posts from teachers. By turning that from on to off, you are going to stop the influx of emails. You may want to adjust some of these others but when you get comments on your post or whether or not a teacher returns the work or gives you any feedback, you may want to decide whether or not you want to receive those email notifications. In addition, if there's one class that you want to turn off, there's a little arrow here that will allow you to turn off an entire class rather than having these settings apply to each class. Back on the main class dashboard, I wanted to take you into one of the classes so that we can take a look at the different types of posts you will see within a classroom. First, you'll have your stream. Your stream is updated with announcements or um, 
post that the teacher has made and this will stay live and active and the newest post will always be at the top unless the teacher pins a post up here for you. So this is something where you might come to get some information or a classroom announcement. But the classwork that teachers are going to post will fall under this classwork tab at the top. You will see that sometimes they'll post things like class resources and other times it will be assignments that will have a due date and need to be turned in. You will notice that based on the color of the icon, that gives you a little bit of a signal on whether or not it's work that needs to be completed or work for informational purposes. Also within this, you will find that there is, when you click on an assignment, there is an option to view the full assignment. This is kind of a sneak preview of what the assignment is, but when you click on view assignment, you will get more information and you will see the different types of assignments that teachers can post. This assignment is posted with instructions, but no actual document for you to write on or turn in. Within these instructions, it will say that you are to create a new Google Doc. You will create a new Google Doc by going to add or create, creating your Google Doc, completing the work, and then you will submit it and mark it as done. Another type of assignment that you might be given might look like this, where it is a, a survey, this is a tech survey to complete, or it might be a quiz. This is any sort of Google form where when you click on this, you'll complete the assignment, you'll submit it, and then mark it as done. That way you know that you've already completed that type of an assignment. The third type of an assignment that you might receive, and this is usually a found a little more frequently, is one that is already assigned to you to complete. So when you click on the view assignment, you will see that there is instructions here and your work is located over here. You will know that the work is already assigned to you because your name will be listed within the document. When you click on this assignment, it will be something that you can work right within that document and turn in. Lastly, before we leave here, I want to show you two important features. This is the class comment. This is the private comment. Class comments, when turned on, would go to everyone in the class. It may be a good place to ask questions or clarification because sometimes classmates can be a great resource. Private comments are only going to go to your teacher. So if you have a question about an assignment that you would like answered only by your teacher, then you're gonna to wanna to use the private comments located over here. That will only go to the teacher and the teacher will be able to respond back to you. When you do the class comments over here, again, that will go to everyone. So just be sure when you're using class comments, you don't put anything in here that you don't want others to see. for you when using Google Classroom is that you actually have the ability to take your work back before it's graded if you realize that maybe there's something that you needed to fix or add to your work. So once you complete your work and you click turn in, the teacher has it for grading. But if you realize that maybe there's something you did wrong or you forgot and left something important off of your assignment, you have the option to click this unsubmit button. By clicking unsubmit, you will get that assignment returned back to you and now you can make changes to that document. Just remember, after you make the changes, you have to resubmit it or turn it in again Otherwise, your teacher won't have access to your completed work. I hope this video on Google Classroom Life Hacks has been helpful. Please be sure to like our video and subscribe for more videos that might just help you get through this remote learning a little bit easier.